We just ran across Miss Go Electric here at CES 2023, and up next, we're going to talk about some of our favorite upcoming automotive technologies, so make sure you stick around for that. So, Miss Go Electric, great to see you here in Las Vegas. Yes, great and to see you. It's an exciting show because there's always so much going on. There is, and more and more we're seeing a lot of electric mobility products, so mm -hmm. I'm super excited about the days to come because yeah. there's a lot to offer here. Yeah, so what are some of your favorite things that you've seen at the show? Well, so far. My slogan at my channel is drive, fly, ride, and I've done a lot of driving and a lot of riding on e-bikes and things of that uh -huh. nature this year, but I'm really, really excited to see more of the flying aspect. Yes, so yes, So there's yes. going to be some electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles here. There are going to be some electric hydrofoil boats wow. that I want to check out. So those are some of the things that I want to try to cover a little bit more while I'm here because those really spark my interest. And mm -hmm. I think that they're just innovating and at the cutting edge. So I'm, yeah. I'm intrigued. Yeah, flying, flying cars, as it were, aren't really a thing. It's been a, a dream since forever, but maybe now in the 21st century, we'll kind of get there with these vertical takeoff aircraft. We're, we're getting closer. Yeah. I, I saw an article come out today that Stellantis was investing in Archer Aviation. Mm -hmm. More money, $150 million, towards manufacturing their first EV tool that's coming in 2024. Mm -hmm. And so that makes me think that, okay, we're inching closer and closer yeah. to these like regional electric transport yeah. options. So yeah. I'm, I'm so excited to see all of them that they have here at the show. Hopefully more on the commercial side because people tend to not drive too well and I don't know how much I would trust <laughs> them flying, you know. Touche, touche. So, yeah. uh, one technology I'm super excited about, it's not really here at the show, but I did a story on this a while back. It's about lithium ion battery recycling. That's a major problem, as you well know, that once electric vehicles reach the end of their lives, what do you do with the batteries? Like, mm -hmm. there's a lot of very expensive materials that go into those things, and do you just throw them in a landfill? Like, what do you do with them? Well, this company called Aqua Metals has figured out a way of basically reclaiming all of the materials from inside the battery, and that includes the lithium, which typically when you smelt the batteries down, just dissipates, it's gone, you lose it. But they figured out a way to do that with sort of a, an electrolytic process that they can extract all of that stuff out and reuse it again. And it's basically in its pure form, so it doesn't have to be refined or anything wow. like that. So that's something I really look forward to seeing be expanded and developed in the future. I mean, uh, we've seen over the course of this past year so many investments in battery technology, mm -hmm. and I think that's a good play on the second life and also, you know, like you said, we don't want to see these materials just going in landfills exactly. when they can be reused. And especially, especially with the prices of things for exactly. lithium or cobalt or manganese or whatever. Yep, yeah. completely agree. Yeah. And on that point, I think this year is going to be really exciting to see more charging infrastructure mm -hmm. development of products with V2X technology, bi-directional capabilities. There yep. are a lot at CES that are showcasing new products. So. Companies like ABB, Blink, um, uh, SK is here. Mm. There's a lot of companies that yep. are going to be not only in the charging infrastructure um, segment, yep. uh, but also deploying home stations that people can charge their EVs at home. Yeah, the public charging network is a major issue. We've talked about yes. that on EV Pulse. Um, we've had some issues with a certain company when we go to do our charging tests. Hmm. Which I one might could have that two. be? It starts with an <laughs> E and ends in an A, right? <laughs> Erica. <laughs> yeah, right? So, but any investment that can be made in the public charging infrastructure, I am all for because it's one thing to charge at home, which is great for probably 90% of the time for 90% of the people. But if you want to take a long drive and go somewhere, you need a better solution. I, and it I'm, doesn't exist. Yeah, and I am one of those people that are kind of on the abnormal side of things where the majority of my miles are actually road trip miles. Mm, so you're not I a liar then. Am, <laughs> yeah, so it's really important for me yeah. to see the infrastructure be reliable. Yes. And we're going to see this year the NEVI deployment, the installation of those mm -hmm. stations are going to start for 2023 yeah. after they get all those RFPs rolling. But yeah. I think it's going to be a big deal for talking about uptime and maintenance for this calendar year. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what they got at the show. Absolutely. You just mentioned a moment ago V2X, and we literally today just shot another video about that. Uh, Qualcomm is working on pushing that forward. So we got sort of a demo of their vehicle to X, so basically vehicle to everything communication. So that is 
that is a, a major way of improving safety because if your vehicle can communicate with intersections, with other cars and trucks on the roads, or yeah. pedestrians or cyclists, suddenly you can, you can drive in a way that, you can eliminate fatalities. I mean, that's the ultimate goal. And very interesting. We're not there yet. It's still probably a long way off, at least a few years, but important steps are being made. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, on the charging infrastructure note, mm -hmm. Wireless charging. Exactly. We're seeing some exactly. people here display some wireless charging, um, you know, options. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's going to be a really great technology to deploy in 2023 and beyond. Because yes. once we see more EV fleet commercial trucks, exactly. things that's of where that it really nature, pays off. I think it'll really pay off, and it just needs to keep getting better and yeah. better. And we're right at the cost. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to pull into your garage or carport and not have to plug in. It's, it's nice. I mean, plugging in is hardly the most difficult thing in the world to do. Right. But <laughs> if you don't have to do it, it's one less pain point. Um, but for fleet customers, like you said, you have you know, a delivery or a livery service or whatever, and they're going to a depot every night. It could be a big game changer for them to not have to worry about that. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, one other technology that I'm interested in, I don't know if you heard the news, BMW was investing in a company, I think it's called Jetty Technologies, to reclaim copper from waste ore. Now that sounds kind of boring, but when you think about it, <laughs> copper is so important. It goes in electric motors, it goes in wiring, not only in your home, but also in the infrastructure. It's hugely important. It's not as sexy as manganese or cobalt or whatever, but you need copper. And they found a way to extract that from a waste material that would normally just go unused. That's fascinating. So very cool stuff there. And it's expensive. So Yes, copper is expensive. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So let's talk about some future vehicles. Uh, Volkswagen just unveiled the new ID7, an electric sedan? A sedan. Well, who's going to buy United that in States. the US? <laughs> Nobody wants sedans anymore, right? I think that's an interesting play because, you know, <laughs> they had the ID Aero concept, uh -huh. and this is kind of the evolution of that yes. in a pre production phase, mm -hmm. prototype mm -hmm. style. But they're not really letting, as far as I know, people get inside this mm -hmm. ID7 at this okay. show because it's still pretty early in the baking process. Yeah. But it's been a few, few years since they've You'd had think that they'd concept. be further along. But, right. Yeah. But maybe that's them thinking, like, maybe the US market, mm, I don't know about this sedan. Yeah. I still think that there is room in the marketplace for an electric sedan. We see Model 3 doing pretty successful mm -hmm. here. Um, so, competition with different brands and different body styles is always good in my opinion yeah. but um, will it be enough to beat the Ionic 6 which is an eGMP car which are arguably the best in the business right now I have very high hopes for the Ionic 6 and I don't I know do if too. Volkswagen can outdo that I we'll have to see I'm not gonna judge right now but I completely mm. agree with you I will have to say just on the software side of things VW has been getting a bad rap for a long time on that and probably deserves oh, to. Oh, their infotainment <laughs> system is not great. Right. In the so, ID4, at least. I think just looking at that standpoint, because in the ID7 announcement, they did reveal some improvements mm -hmm. on their touch screen. Yes. Um, but it didn't seem like too much. Yeah, I think it's a 15-inch screen on the dashboard. And then they, they specifically called out illuminated touch sliders for the climate control system, which is the biggest duh ever but yes. <laughs> it's not offered it, they don't have that in the id4 which is like why why wouldn't you do that i think like you said ionic 6 is going to be hard to beat that yeah. is the next major electric sedan in yeah. this market that is going to be super successful in my opinion they Absolutely. just got to get it out to more states yes i live in michigan i want to buy <laughs> a hyundai electric car come on <laughs> yeah or the genesis is lovely beautiful the GV love the gv60 love it um also we're expecting a ram truck an electric ram truck can't say anything about it right now. We have not seen it. What do you, what's your take on I'm that? I'm super excited about this because I think that is a demographic that we need to get more people mm -hmm. into the electric mobility movement. Yeah. So um, if Ram can bring something that is going to be competitive, mm -hmm. when it comes out, yes. that's the key. There are already some electric so you trucks. the Lightning out already. And the, which and is the Rivian R1T. Yep. Yep. Um, we're going to see the Silverado EV coming out this uh, year. So there's already competition on the market that they need to bring out something that is specification wise going to go head to head with these guys. Yeah. So when it actually gets into production, will it be enough? Yeah. 
we'll see. Well, it's a Ram, so chances are the interior will be pretty nice, and that's mm -hmm. the last couple generations have been one of their major selling points. So I have I have high hopes for them, at least in that area. Yeah, but we'll I have do too. to wait and see because we haven't seen the vehicle yet. No, but I so. am excited about that. Yeah, more yeah. EV trucks, the better, in my opinion. Yes, absolutely, because like the Lightning is phenomenal. Oh it's God, I love just that. an F one fifty with some electric motors and a battery, but. Man, that thing drives well. Um, I, I performs beautifully. Absolutely love that truck. I spent, uh, you know, a good portion of time driving a thousand miles across the West uh -huh. in a review, and I fell in love. <laughs> I was like, why didn't I put an order in for right, this? Day? Right. Now you gotta wait because you can't get one. I know. Or you pay through the nose if you find one at a dealer, right? It's true. Yeah. So I'm excited for more to be available on the market. Okay. Anyway, Miss Go Electric, thank you so much for chatting. I appreciate it so much. Yeah. Uh, where can people find your work? So you can find me on YouTube at youtube.com slash Miss Go Electric or on pretty much any social media platform, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of that, and just at Miss Go Electric. For more with Misco Electric, check out this video here. It's about Charge Across America, which is a cross-country drive in electric vehicles. She actually took a Mustang Mach-E from coast to coast. It's super interesting. Give it a watch.